Hi, my dear students, welcome to the session. In this video, we are going to talk about how to solve bold phase questions from the section of critical reasoning. These questions are also termed as identify the reasoning. My name is Juhi Narula and let's get started. So uh, before we actually proceed to understand that what should be the right strategy and approach to solve such questions, we'll quickly revise how an argument is formed because having a solid understanding of an argument will really bring a lot of ease in solving such questions. So when we talk about an argument, the paragraph that you get in critical reasoning questions on which the question is framed, that paragraph in technical terms, we call it an argument. Now, an argument essentially comprises of a claim or a conclusion. So, what do we mean by a claim or a conclusion? Both these terms I can interchangeably use. Conclusion is the objective of writing the argument. So, what is the point the author wants to establish after writing the argument in technical terms is called a claim. Now, there can be certain conclusion indicators present in the argument that will help you to easily identify the conclusion. Now let's take a look at these words. So these are the words, words like therefore, hence, consequently, as a result, clearly. So what you will do is you will take a minute and I'll stay quiet for a minute. Quickly note down these words so that whenever you encounter these words, you are sure that we are talking about the conclusion. Please do so. So I'm sure you have noted down the words. It's very important to pen down the details which you learn while you're attending the sessions. See, this is going to bring a lot of ease and conceptual clarity. And when you write in a way, you are memorizing and revising it nicely. So never escape this step. I know there can be some students who would just want to quickly, you know, take the video ahead and not stop to write the words. Plus, Please don't do that because writing is in a way revising and recapitulating in an effective way, right? So further, uh, there are some examples that we can consider that help us understand that what is the conclusion in the argument. So you can take a look at the three sentences, quickly read it and then we'll discuss it together. So let's discuss. Della is usually negligent about her work, hence she is not given any major responsibility. So if you will take a look at uh, the first argument, you can clearly see hence as a conclusion indicator. Now see, uh, the only thing that is expected is that you be observant and once you are observant, you will see that your uh, you know identification of conclusion really becomes easy and grasp of the overall argument is also effective. Come to the second one. The crime rate has recently increased in the city. Therefore, the state government has directed the police officers to take effective measures to control the crime rate. So, this bold statement is actually the conclusion. Sarah works for 12 hours in the office while Annie works for 6 hours. It can be concluded that Sarah works harder than Annie. So, clearly it can be seen that the three highlighted statements are actually acting as a conclusion. Now, uh, when we talk about a conclusion, like we previously discussed, that conclusion is the point the author wants to establish. The basis on which the conclusion can be established is called evidence or premise and that forms the second part of the argument. 
so how will you validate the argument right you need a particular uh, sentence that will help us establish the conclusion so that sentence or sentences in technical terms we call evidence or premise please keep this in mind that whatever information is offered as premise or evidence in the argument i will reinstate this idea that premise and evidence are interchangeably used terms so don't get confused whatever is offered to you as premise or evidence is always considered true take a minute and pen it down I'm sure you have noted, please keep this in mind that whatever is offered as premise or evidence has to be always considered true. You're never going to doubt the authenticity of the statement that acts as premise because usually premise would be a fact or result of some study or, um, you know, uh, reasoning or statistical findings which are to be always considered true. Further, uh, these are certain premise indicators. The way we learned conclusion indicators, similarly, they are premise indicators that help us identify the premise easily. It's not always important that you may get a conclusion or premise indicator, but if you get one, you should be aware that what is the role of that particular word, right? So you can list down the list uh, which is there on the screen in your notebooks. This will help you bring a lot of ease at the time of revision. Please do so. I'm sure you've noted the words. So let's further proceed. Let's take a look at these arguments, quickly read and then we will discuss. So let's uh, begin with the discussion. The lady had to run the house. Can you see because is the premise indicator, her husband was in the ailing condition. So as we can identify that this is the conclusion and this is the evidence. Another way can be that whatever you identify, whatever seems to be a conclusion for you, convert it into a why question and see that whether the other statement or other part of the argument available helps to establish that in case yes, the other part of the sentence is able to answer the why question. What is the why question? You're simply converting the conclusion into a why statement. If the rest of the statement is able to justify the why question, then your identification of conclusion and evidence remains to be correct, right? So let's take a look. How do we do that? Why the lady had to run the house? So this is explaining her husband was in an ailing condition. So that means the identification of evidence and conclusion remains to be correct. Take a look at the second one. Since the exam was in the outskirts of the city, again, since is a strong indicator. So this is the premise indicator, right? Uh, Rihanna decided to take the cap. So if I will place this uh, as a question that why Rihanna decided to take a cap, then you will say, ma'am, because the exam was in the outskirts of the city. That means our identification, the statement acts as a conclusion and the statement acts as an evidence. Also, Clearly, discreetly, you can see the indicator. So that makes your life all the more easy. In case these indicators are not there, then you can simply take a Y test. Again, I'm reinstating what is a Y test. 
by reading the sentence whatever you are able to identify as a conclusion convert it into a why question and see whether the rest of the statement is able to answer that why question in case it is able to that means your identification or conclusion and premise remains to be valid right now take a look at the third one due to bad weather conditions the pilot of the plane decided to delay the flight so we can see that uh, due to is again an indicator and uh, the why the pilot of the plane decided to delay the flight because the weather conditions were bad so i'm sure we are sorted with all the three cases right so once we are clear with conclusion and evidence let's see what is the third part of an argument the third part of an argument is an assumption remains to be the most interesting part now what happens is when we draw the conclusion or when author creates an argument it is always not necessary that all the aspects are taken into consideration while drawing a conclusion now since uh, say for instance i tell you that a student of mine uh, was in iit and that is the reason he got the placement now you can say what about the intelligence quotient how did he perform in the aptitude exams or you know uh, how was his overall cgpa how was his performance how good he was in interview we have not talked about this right only being an iit cannot validate that the placement happened so other factors we have not talked about now this remains to be a gap or a loophole in the argument now what do we do there is a gap or a loophole so we take into consideration an assumption so assumption is always unstated something which is implicit something which is not directly pointed out right so we'll assume that being an iit and he was intelligent and he satisfied all the criteria and iit helped play an important role in his placement right so this is something that we need to uh, assume in order to validate the argument if you want to doubt the argument if you want to weaken it you can say the other factors have not been talked about so can only being an iit and help you uh, get into placement there's a friend of mine who was an iit but he did not uh, get through any placement exam right you can give a counter example where the cause was present but the effect did not follow so in a way you are going to weaken the argument now what's our role our role is to establish the conclusion so whatever is the loophole in the argument that has to be taken care by assumption so whatever is you know not discussed whatever is an error or not taken into account while leading to the conclusion those particular points in technical terms can be said as gap loophole missing link and once you are able to identify that what is the gap you have to simply take an assumption to bridge that particular gap so that the conclusion can be effectively established right um now says there's a match between india and pakistan we lose two wickets and virat kohli comes on the crease and you take a sigh of relief so what are we uh, you know assuming that virat kohli is going to play well right or uh, say it's cloudy outside before leaving home you carry an umbrella so what is an assumption that it might possibly rain so both these cases we have considered the assumption is hidden something which is not directly stated right so you should be clear what an assumption is we will take this uh, example to uh, make the understanding good first i'll give you a minute read the argument identify the conclusion and premise and then we'll discuss so i'm sure you have read it and you have taken a look at what can be the possible gaps in case you have not let's do it together
A study was conducted on group of office going people and it was found that people who eat five meals in a day are healthier and fit as compared to people who eat three meals in a day. So take a look at this. There is a proper conclusion indicator. Hence, it can be concluded that people who take frequent meals have better longevity. That means they live longer. as compared to people who take only three meals. So clearly we can say that eating frequent meals is being associated with long life. Right. Now, if you take a look at it, uh, this research or the study was conducted on a group of office going people. Now, the conclusion is implied on everybody. So, what, how, what about other people? Maybe it's not true for people who are at home or who are sports people who are, or who are professors. So, how do we know about them? So, that's not been taken into account. So, what did the argument assume? The argument assumed that whatever is true for group of office going people will be true for everybody. Right. Now, uh, it says that uh, eating frequent meals is the most important criteria to live longer. You might say that, you know, maybe he's eating frequent meals, but he's eating unhealthy meals every time he's having another meal, right? So, what about that case? Or maybe there are inherent problems uh, of BP or diabetes. So, those problems have not been taken into account. How, how about there can be a possibility if somebody meets when an accident and some mishap happens? So, that has not been taken into account. So, what did we assume in the entire argument that whatever is true for office going people is true for everybody we have not talked about the age group that has also not been validated so we will say it is a generalized claim applicable for everybody and then we'll consider that frequency of meals remains to be the most important component and being healthy means that you are living a longer life right so we have to take these assumptions now initially when you'll read the argument you'll see theek to aise mein kya problem hai matlab ye ma'am kyun gap aur loophole ki kahani bata rahi hai ye ye understood hi to hai exactly ye understood hai ye isliye hi aap reasoned acche ho isliye critical reasoning mein score karne ki possibility bad jati hai it is just that kyunki question aapse explicit पूछेगा तो आपको क्लैरिटी होनी चाहिए दैट इन ऑर्डर टू स्टैब्लिश द कंक्लूजन व्हाट डिड यू थिंक इन योर माइंड राइट सो आई एम श्योर यू आर क्लियर विद ऑल द थ्री एस्पेक्ट्स नाउ दिस वाज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज़ नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द कैटेगरी वेयर वी विल टॉक अबाउट द बेसिक अप्रोच एंड वी विल सॉल्व सम क्वेश्चंस सो दैट यू गेट बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो व्हाट विल हैपन इज यू विल बी प्रोवाइडेड विद फ्यू स्टेटमेंट्स इन द पैराग्राफ इन द आर्गुमेंट व्हिच विल बी बोल्ड so your role will be to identify what is the role of the bold statement right is it a conclusion is it a premise it cannot be an assumption because uh, i have already told you that assumption is implicit so if you want to make a note somewhere you can make it that assumptions will never be uh, the answer in bold faced questions because assumption is hidden and you will be provided with the sentences which are in bold and you will be asked what is the role of it right so uh, i'm sure we are clear with the task i'll show you one question and we'll solve some together so that you get into the rhythm and understand how it looks like the objective of these questions is to check whether the student is comfortable enough to comprehend the structure are we clear with our basics right so uh, it is also very important to learn the approach which is very similar to assumption strengthening and weakening questions because there also we try to identify the conclusion and the premise and same is the case in these questions where we are going to look for uh, the premise and the conclusion so uh, this is how the question stem can look like uh, identify the reasoning what is the role of the bold statement or Uh, what is the reasoning strategy of the argument so take a look and pen down these uh, question stems so that whenever you encounter the question you are aware that the resolve and explain uh, sorry the bold faced questions are being tested please do so
So let's move to the next step. Next step is deconstructing the argument and that is the reason since the step is very very crucial in solving such questions. So we've already talked about in detail that how the argument is composed. So this will definitely uh, be helpful. So deconstructing means look for the prem uh, premise and the conclusion. Once we are sorted on this front, then it will be really easy for us to reach to the right answer. I always believe that in our minds, we should always be clear what the answer should look like. So you should predict a possible solution. Here it is not important that you come up with very fancy words, come up with uh, absolutely proper terminology or your, you know, you should be exact in your, uh, you know, uh, predictions and your prediction should exactly match the answer choices. No, this is highly unreal to be achieved. What is expected? It's a simple answer. What the answer should do like in Hindi, in simple language, you should know, right? Because, you, you know, you don't ponder on this and then incorrect answer choices attract. So, there are trap answer choices rather. I'll put it like this. There are some answer choices which are easy um, to eliminate. There are some answer choices which are difficult, which are tricky, where, you know, you might get swayed towards one of them. So, Always, if you have in uh, your mind that what the correct answer will look like, you'll be able to overcome this sort of a problem to a major extent, right? Next is uh, eliminate the incorrect answer choices. So, you have an answer in your mind. You have to see which is not matching with your, uh, you know, predicted answer and eliminate. So, eliminate answer choices which are extreme. Eliminate answers which are partially correct. Now, this is a very major trap in these questions that half of the choice would be correct, other half would be incorrect and students would not check the entire answer choice, never do so. Check each and every word. Try to stick as much as possible to the main text or the information offered. Avoid your own reasoning or instinct, right? And, uh, you know, this is also very important that don't go beyond the context of discussion. All right, so it's time where we try one question. So read this uh, question. The first step should be to read the question stem. This is one. Second is deconstruct the argument. There are two statements which are in bold. As you can see, our role will be to identify that what is the you know uh, role played by the bold statement. So quickly do so, and then we get into the uh, discussion. And we'll also see the options for ourselves. I'll give you one minute. Read it. Read it nicely, and then we'll discuss. So let's see. The HR team was severely criticized for its decision to ban the use of social media. So this was a decision taken by the team. The response was heavy criticism. The head of the HR team has responded stating while the team believes in freedom. So you can see this transition, right? Uh, this attempt is to control wastage of office time in such activities. So this was a measure taken and now since it's, it's receiving a criticism, so how is the head responding to it? That's been talked about. But itna sa simple prediction, ya clarity ki ho kya hai, should be enough to take a look at the answer choices. So see, I did not take a look at the answer choices. I first read it, had an answer in my mind, and now I'm taking a look. So this will help you avoid any sort of confusion. The first describes a reaction to an action. Uh, and the second describes an action taken in response. So second is not, I mean, you know, revoke to nahi kar liya decision, right? So this can go out. The first provides a criticism of an action and the second provides justification for the necessity of the action. So criticism hua hai, that's been talked about or later justify kar hai, H, HR head ki bhai social uh, media pe time kharaab hota hai. We can keep this. Never take a final call till you explore all the answer choices. This is one important suggestion. Please note it down if you have not and always take care of this. The first is a criticism that the argument disagree. Argument disagree nahi kar rahe or... Uh, you know, the second is the perspective that criticism supports. Perspective criticism ko support nahi kar raha. Wo te hai ki bhi aisa measure kyun liya gaya. The first is a point of view of group of people. Second, attacks. It's not attacking, right? 
the first provides a counterpoint to arguments conclusion the second is that conclusion absolutely easy elimination so we can definitely go for b as the final answer let's see the first statement is saying that this action was criticized and the hr head is saying that why it was necessary to take this action right this was a prediction and that exactly matches with b so we will go for b as a correct answer right so i'm sure you've got some idea now we are going to practice a lot of questions you will get into the rhythm how to tackle them so let's begin this is the first question quickly try it i'll give you one complete minute and then we'll discuss it together so let's discuss i'm sure you've tried so uh, what is the role of the bold statements always begin with the question because here yes aggressively we are doing only bold face but in exam you will be getting a mixed bag set so how do you deal with an argument that sort of clarity you will only get once you are sorted with the you know uh, passage and you are sorted with the question so let's read the argument recent studies have depicted that people who keep daily records of the calories burned are far more successful at losing weight than people who do not track the calorie they burn while exercising so it's a result of a study so in the previous discussion initially when we were talking about claim and premise i did tell you that uh, usually premise is a result of some study so you can take that clue and yes this is one of the premise statements as it looks like you can have two rounds of uh, elimination if you are sorted that this is premise you can take a look at the answer choices eliminate if there are some incorrect ones uh, or if you are comfortable with uh, dealing with the entire uh, reasoning together you can do that way also right so uh, i would always suggest that break the problem into pieces rather than targeting it as a whole that will make your life simple so i will go for first round of elimination the first statement is a main claim so it's not the main claim it is a result of some study so this goes out uh, the first is an explanation why certain reasoning is true and uh, second is an example so this we can keep it because till here i am not very it is an explanation for sure but the later part i have not read so on the basis of just this information i can't eliminate come to see first is an illustration so it's again an illustration so it's result of some studies and illustration we can keep this first is a premise again we can definitely keep this the first is a counter argument so again we need to read whether the counter argument is there or not or the author is trying to take the discussion in the same direction so let's read the later part so as if for now i could just eliminate a and it is perfectly fine experts believe that many efforts to lose weight fail because uh, people burn fewer calories as required one gym instructor claimed so this is a proper indicator that we are talking about conclusion here so we can mark this that a group of people visiting his gym could not lose weight as they could just burn 150 calories a day he found people consume more food in proportion and burned very less in contrast uh, when through special device when gym instructors match their calories burned the weight loss program turns effective so we are just interested in this statement and in this statement so here what is the claim that's being supported by the gym instructor right so we will see uh this is not a counter argument so e can be eliminated right now take a look at the other options that we have we have b c d so why certain reads second is an example of finding made by the author so it's a finding which is claimed by the gym instructor right 
so this is what the gym instructor is suggesting so this also goes out um, the second is a counter theory nothing is a counter theory it's not countering that idea so even this goes out so what will be the correct answer d right so i'm sure we are sorted with this question these questions are simple all you just need to do is be very patient and uh, intelligent in eliminating the incorrect options right so let's try the next question we'll give you a minute and then we'll get into the discussion So let's begin with the discussion. Um, the war against cigarette and tobacco uh, for the time being should be fought by increasing awareness about the ill effects. So they're trying to give a solution that how the war should be fought, right? Uh, later part, asking farmers to stop growing tobacco will create problems for poverty-ridden farmers. So this is, cannot be done. Now there is this rather. So rather is a negative. So the author is trying to give a solution that you know don't stop farmers to grow tobacco that's going to create problems rather what is the other solution let's read the government should take measures to rebuild agricultural practices where farmers are only uh, growing tobacco are dependent financially so don't stop them right now but try to replace with some alternate means uh, so that the farmers who are only dependent on uh, growing tobacco they can be sorted so let's take a look so first is also providing a solution second is saying that what cannot be uh, immediately i mean uh, second line says what cannot be immediately done rather how should be done in a strategic way so this is how i'm predicting the answer now let's take a look at the options the first is a conclusion drawn by the speaker yet yeah, is yes it is a conclusion second is an alternative to uh, that conclusion we can keep that so it's not an alternative it is a long term thing so if you are able to trace that then maybe you can eliminate but if you feel that yes this is another sort of a solution offered then maybe uh, you know you can keep this answer choice never because why i'm saying is that when i discuss these questions students say that they are not uh, very happy to eliminate a right in the beginning so it is fine don't force yourself to eliminate any incorrect uh, option until and unless you get this conviction and once you've seen all the answer choices it will get this clarity which choice to keep and which to eliminate this is by practice you will definitely get right so don't worry that mujhe kaise pata chalega aap jisse practice karte you get into the rhythm of question solving and you get that you know knack that is the reason we say practice career why because you get into the rhythm you get into that logic that why you are keeping this answer choice and why are you eliminating the other one so if in the primer phase you want to keep a you can keep it the first is a short term solution to the problem second is a long term solution so this is a better choice right go kare up strategically karna long term mein gradual agricultural practices ko rebuild karo so b up automatically if you are uh, if you have read b you will eliminate a right so uh, we can eliminate this now the first presence a problem it's not a problem it is if given a solution so this can be easily eliminated the first presence a prop a popular solution solution is there second presence a solution preferred by the author प्रेफर तो ये भी ऑथर का ही स्टेटमेंट है तो ये किसी और ने नहीं दिया कोई सोल्यूशन राइट सो अगेन दिस गोज आउट एंड द ऑथर इज नॉट शोइंग एनी इंक्लिनेशन इज सेंग वॉट शुड बी डन इन लॉन्ग टर्म सो अगेन इफ यूल कंपेयर बी एंड डी यूल फाइंड बी बेटर द फर्स्ट प्रेजेंस एंड आर्ग्यूमेंट सेकेंड प्रेजेंस एविडेंस टू सपोर्ट द आर्ग्यूमेंट नो दिस इज अनदर थिंग दिस इज अनदर थिंग सो दिस कैन ऑल्सो बी एलिमिनेटेड सो द बेस्ट मैच विल बी बी हाउ एवर प्लीज सी दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इज डिफिकल्ट इन अ वे द टर्स ऑफ चॉइस आर वेरी क्लोज स्टूडेंट्स गेट इन टू ट्रैप बाय ए स्टूडेंट्स डू कम टू अस एंड से दैट डी कैन ऑल्सो बी एन आंसर वाई इज डी इन करेक्ट बिकॉज देर इज नो लाइकलीनेस शोन टूवर्ड द सेकेंड वन 
right and uh, and this is what should be fought so should be is again the author is saying that this is his choice again so preference wise we can't comment so that is the reason d will go out and this is second is not an alternative so take first is a short term thing second is a long term thing not an alternative to the short term measure right so the best match will be b in this case let's try the next question please take a minute to solve it and then we'll discuss So let's discuss the boldface portion plays which of the following roles. Now let's take a look at the argument. The commitment to express solidarity cannot be achieved by being incognito. Incognito means invisible, right? You are not able to be seen. Despite the fact that there have been many changes in the world that we live in, the human emotions are driven by personal interaction. So hence, it can be concluded that advantages of strengthening such behaviors will reap fruit only when the other person is aware about who conveyed solidarity. Solidarity is support, right? So see, the first is a conclusion, second is a premise, and the third statement is restating resta that conclusion, right? So we are clear that first is the conclusion, last is a restatement. So now we can eliminate. You can see my predicted answer choices are quite simple and only acting as a clue for us to make elimination process easy. It's an illustration of premise. So it's not an illustration. It is the conclusion. So this can go. It is used to counter. There's nothing to counter. Rather, the argument is supporting the idea that you cannot express support without, uh, you know, showing your real self. It is used to support indirectly. There is no indirect claim and rather this is a claim. So this also goes out. It is used to identify to social benefit with the argument is concerned. So uh, it is used to, but what is the role? That's not what D is reflecting. So that's the beauty of process of elimination. You keep on eliminating the incorrect answer choices. Whatever remains shall act as a conclusion. So E clearly is the best match in this case. I hope we are sorted. Let's move to the next question. Try this, I'll give you a minute and then we'll get into the discussion. So I'm sure you have tried. Let's discuss. The boldface portion plays which of the following roles in the argument. So we know it's a boldface question. Let's read the argument. The CEO of the company in his farewell speech claimed that some of his underlings, underlings means juniors. So uh, feel that the current depreciation, depreciation is going down. of company shares 
has been caused by my decisions i admit that the value of shares have declined during my tenure so he is accepting something so for me this is acceptance statement right so again please don't try to reach to very complex answers keep it simple however i'm not ready to take this blame on me so this is countering the statement but the statement is not highlighted so this is not a concern i believe that this has happened due to wrong decisions taken by the md on which i had no control so saying galat hua par ye meri wajah se galat nahi hua main manta hu galat hua par meri wajah se galat nahi hua md ke decisions ki wajah se galat hua to usne apna stake diya apna idea present kiya hai aur he is accepting it right so it's sort of an acceptance aur wo bata raha hai ki accept kar raha hai par galti kiski hai usko point out kar raha hai so now you can explore the options the first is an evidence made by the underlings against the ceo ceo to khud hi bol raha hai to underlings ka to idea expression hi nahi aayi so ek to bahut aasan hai elimination the first statement is accepted by ceo correct hai. the second is the result of underlings claim underling ka claim hai ceo hi of uh, कह रहा है कि एमडी की गलती की वजह से तो अंडरलिंग्स का तो स्टेटमेंट अभी आया ही नहीं द फर्स्ट इज द फैक्ट दैट सीओ डज नॉट डिनाई सो या दिस इज एक्सेप्टेंस एंड सेकंड ऑफर सपोर्ट टू द कंटेम्पलेशन ऑफ द क्लेम सो यू नो व्हाट इज हिज आईडिया सो वी कैन कीप दिस द इट इज यूज्ड टू सपोर्ट इनडायरेक्टली अ क्लेम दैट द आर्गुमेंट इन टर्न यूजेस टू सपोर्ट डायरेक्टली द कंक्लूजन जस्ट अ ट्रिकी लैंग्वेज टू अननेसेसरीली ट्रबल यू इफ यू विल टेक अ लुक इट इज सो इजी टू एलिमिनेट The first statement intends to weaken the position of CEO. Second intends to strengthen the position of MD. MD की position कैसे strengthen हो रही है? वो तो कह रहा है कि MD की ने गलती करी है. So E also goes out. So just by eliminating, see how clear our answers would be. So B would be the right answer. I'm sure we are sorted on this. Let's move to the next question. So I'm sure you've tried. Let's discuss. In the argument, Avan, uh, argument given, the two portions in bold face play which of the following rules? So take a look. Controlling the child in formative years is an integral part of parenting. So it's an important part. The child needs to be controlled if he is becoming too disciplined and focused. However, so you can see that uh, keeping the child excessively controlled can lead to child becoming a rebel. Rebel मतलब विद्रोही. So this is saying that what can be the possibility, right? So ये एक possibility reflect कर रहा है. So I can say it's a possibility sort of a thing. Effective parenting should always maintain perfect balance between freedom and control. So this is suggesting what to do. Right? Are you able to see? So this is what my predicted answer would be. So I'm not getting into unnecessarily a lot of, you know, uh, high end language or you know, complex statements to predict my answer. I'm keeping the game really simple, and that's again reinstating the advice to you. Don't try to complex your predicted statements. Keep them to simple and easy. So let's take a look at the options. The first is an opinion. The second is a conclusion. So second is suggesting what to do, right? So this goes out, and this is not an opinion. This is saying what can happen. So A goes out. The first is a factual possibility. Second is an opinion that opposes that particular possibility. Oppose नहीं कर रहा कह रहा है what to do. तो यहाँ तक तो ये correct answer था. Factual possibility तो है. But so this is a partially correct answer. So this is a trap which usually is uh, you know uh, seen. in such questions so this will go out it is partially correct the first is a general opinion it's not an opinion this is a possibility right so the first is a factual possibility 
second is a conclusion that presents a method so this is what to do is basically present a method or a solution uh, preventing that occurrence so definitely this matches with our answer the first is a possible event of cause and effect second denies it's not denying it is saying what you should do. So clearly D will be the best answer, right? So see how predicting our answer choices is really making the game easy for us. So let's move to the next question. Take a minute and solve it and then we'll discuss. So let's discuss. Um, in the argument above, two bold faced portions play which of the following roles? So read it. In countries where automobile insurance include compensation for whiplash injuries, sustained in automobile accidents, reports of having such injuries are twice as frequent as their countries in which whiplash is not covered. So where there is cover, there is twice as compared to where there is no cover whiplash. Presently, so yeah, this is uh, a finding, right? A output, a result, hai, right? Presently, no objective test for whiplash exists. But let me tell you, whiplash is not a test, hai, no detection test. So it's true that spurious reports, spurious means uh, where you have doubt, hai, right? Uh, yeah, incorrect reports of whiplash injuries cannot be readily identified. Matlab, agar whiplash sahi mein hua ya nahi hua, ya identify nahi kar sakte. Nevertheless, these facts do not warrant the conclusion drawn by some commentators that in countries with the higher rates of reported whiplash injuries, half of the reported cases are spurious. But aap ye comment bhi nahi kar sakte ki wo incorrect uh, claims hai. Clearly, so this is again uh, very uh, easy to identify that ye to conclusion hai. In countries where automobile insurance does not include compensation of whiplash, people often have little incentive to report whiplash than they actually suffered. So, if there is incentive, if there is not covered, then those who have not been told, they don't say it. Because they don't have any benefit. So, second is a sort of a conclusion. First, there is an outcome of the result. Hai, right? So, let's explore options one. So, first is the claim that the argument disputes. Claim to dispute to kuch nahi kar rahi, right? So, this can go out. Or claim to hai bhi nahi, output hai. So, uh, result ki study hai, goes out, finding hai. First is the claim, asan elimination hai. First is an evidence that has been used to support a conclusion for the, which the argument provides. Further evidence, second is the main conclusion of the argument. Take it. Uh, Ek bar if you wish to keep, you can keep. The first is an evidence whose implications are at issue. So, implication bol rahe na ki spurious results nahi hai. So, agar a first part ko compare karoge, to D will find, you will find it more logical and holistic. The second is a claim presented in order to argue against deriving certain implications, right? So, this of course is far better than C. So, that is the reason I always say you will be having this clarity that why the incorrect option should be eliminated but just don't force yourself agar c par hi aap decision le loge to kai bar possibility of marking the correct answer choice weaken ho jayegi that we wouldn't want so first is a finding whose accuracy is evaluated the second is an evidence no second is a claim so e can go out between c and d clearly d is the better answer right so let's move to the next question give you a minute to try this then we will discuss
So let's discuss. Again, uh, the question suggests that's a bold-faced one. So let's read the argument. The scientist is saying evolutionary biology has long held the most attractive male of species defined as those with the highest quality physical traits that have no Dar Darwinian survival value will draw the most female males. So, so sub uh, attractive male species will attract more the females. Ko attract the resulting male offspring will inherit the attractiveness and themselves have more children as a result. So again, this is, you know, uh, a sort of an explanation how the theory is working. Thus, ensuring widespread dissemination, dissemination is spread of the grandparents' genes. Recently, however, so this is counter to the claim, but the later part is irrelevant to the discussion because we have not read any bold portion in that statement. But we will still read it. Scientists have found that sons of high quality male fly catchers fail to inherit the father's mating status. So, it is unfortunate in this case. Mein. Further, the most attractive males were so busy mating that they neglected their offspring. As a result, the son of familiar birds who took better care of their offspring had more success in propagating the species. So, this uh, is opposite theory ko later part support kar hai ki bhai jo good looking species thi, wo, they were uh, mating so they could not take care of their offsprings. So, the homelier birds they jo apne offsprings ki better care rakh rahe the, unki species zyada propagate hui. So, B is countering the initial theory, right? One theory, uska opposite is the later part. So, let's see. Uh, the first is the conclusion of a theory disputed by scientists. Dispute nahi hui, right? So, isko aap eliminate kar do. The first is the premise of a long-held biological theory. The second is an example how this theory works. So, opposite, right? Ye to counter example de The first is an explanation how a biological theory is thought to work. Yes. The second is an example of research results that do not support this theory. Exactly. So, we can keep this. The first is an example of a theory that used to be prevalent up used to nahi bol sakte time ke bare mein mention nahi hai second is a new theory it's not a new theory it's a counter theory right so clearly between c and d or predominant by scientists ye bhi mention nahi so between c and d definitely c is a stronger answer the first introduces a long held belief that scientist is going to disapprove stronger than the claim made by the author right so we can definitely go for c as the correct answer right so this brings us to an end of the discussion. I hope you really enjoyed participating in the class to practice these questions and always, always eliminate the incorrect options. This is certainly going to give you more accuracy. Take care, all the best and don't forget consistency is the key. Bye-bye.